2 Kings 10, 1-36 Devotional Focus Verse But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart, for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. 2 Kings 10, 31 One of my favorite stories about my grandfather, Alba Green, is how he came into the Apostolic Faith Church. Grandpa had been involved in a religious community in the state of Washington, and when that group disbanded, he began searching for a people who believed the whole Bible, a place where he could raise his family and be assured that they were being taught sound doctrine. He heard about the Apostolic Faith work, and in 1921, he came to Portland to investigate. He sat in one meeting in the church at Front and Burnside and afterward asked to speak to our founder, Florence Crawford. He told her, There is enough power in this place to change the world. He had found what he was looking for. The next day, he contacted my grandmother and told her that the family would be moving to Portland. And that very day, he joined the laborers who were building the tabernacle on the church campground. From then on, Grandpa was a wholehearted participant in the work of the Lord. For some years, he was employed by Southern Pacific Railway, but he devoted his after-hours time and Saturdays to whatever task was going on around the church and made many out-of-town trips to assist in branch church projects. After his retirement, he went to work full-time for the church and even lived on the church campground for the last years of his life so that he could be close by to take care of whatever needed to be done there. He raised his children to love and appreciate the gospel, and four of them went into full-time gospel work. The influence of his dedication impacted succeeding generations also. Today, many of his grandchildren and great-grandchildren have active roles in the Apostolic Faith Organization, and their children are being brought up to love church and Sunday school as well. Grandpa's wholehearted commitment to the work of the Lord is a contrast to that of Jehu, the central figure of today's text. Jehu knew of the true God. In fact, he was quite zealous in his destruction of Baalism. He burned the images of Baal throughout Israel and destroyed the house of Baal. Sadly, however, Jehu was more of an instrument of the Lord than a servant. He was half-hearted in his commitment. In spite of his destruction of the evidences of Baal, he remained an idolater himself. While he gave lip service to God, he continued to permit the worship of golden calves. Just as my grandfather's wholehearted commitment to God influenced those who followed him, Jehu's half-hearted response to God influenced those under his rule and the generations who followed him. We read that during his reign, the Lord began to cut Israel short, and his children in successive generations continued in his idolatrous practices. See verse 32. Today, check your commitment to God. Are you serving him wholeheartedly? and being fully obedient to His Word? Going halfway is not enough. Remember, the choices you make today could very well have an impact on those around you and even on those who come after you. If the Lord tarries, let's purpose in our hearts to be completely dedicated to God. Background Information Under the direction of Elisha, a young prophet had anointed Jehu to be the next king of Israel. See 2 Kings 9, 1-10. through Jehu took advantage of his new position to smite the house of Ahab and systematically destroyed anyone who might be a political threat. This action had been predicted by the young prophet who anointed him. See 2 Kings 9, 7-10. through God knew that Jehu would kill and may have used that foreknowledge to accomplish his justice against the evil house of Ahab. 
The 10th chapter of 2 Kings records three violent acts that were committed by Jehu. First, he slew the 70 sons of Ahab. These men were a significant political threat to Jehu, for as descendants of Ahab, they had a great interest in battling to keep the throne of Israel in the dynasty of Omri. Jehu piled the 70 chopped off heads at the city gate possibly in order to strike terror in the heart of anyone who might oppose his rise to power. Second, while visiting Samaria, he ordered the deaths of 42 innocent people who had not yet heard about the massacre of Ahab's sons. The prophet Hosea later foretold that Jehu's dynasty would be punished for this senseless slaughter. See Hosea 1, 4, and 5. Third, he engineered the destruction of all the priests of Baal using deception and the threat of death to anyone who did not carry out his execution orders. See verses 20 through 28. Although Jehu was a violent, ruthless man who was likely motivated primarily by his desire for political power, he tried to justify his actions by claiming that he was merely carrying out the work and words of the Lord. See verses 10 and 16. However, Jehu's hypocrisy is revealed in verses 29 and 31. For in spite of his apparent zeal to wipe out the worship of Baal, he allowed the Israelites to continue the worship of the golden calves in the cities of Bethel and Dan. Some commentators view Jehu as a great patriot of Israel. He protested against Joram and the house of Ahab for the harm they did to Israel. He knew that to be strong, Israel must be cleansed of Baal worship. He likely recognized that Israel had to come back to the true God, but was unconcerned about how they did it. For Jehu, it seemingly was sufficient to worship God at the temple of the golden calves in Dan or Bethel. In addition, there may have been an element of political expediency involved. If Jehu had destroyed the golden calves, the people would have had to travel to the southern kingdom to worship God in Jerusalem. The chapter closes with a summary of Jehu's 28-year reign. While Jehu had the influence and the energy to truly turn the nation back to God, his half-commitment left that potential unfulfilled and pointed to a lack of any real relationship with God. Conclusion Because Jehu's heart was not perfect toward the Lord, much of the land of Israel was lost during his reign, and his dynasty only lasted for four generations. The spiritual choices we make today could have a lasting impact on future generations. Chapter 10 And Ahab had seventy sons in Samaria, and Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, Now as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor, look even out the best and meetest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Behold, two kings stood not before him, how then shall we stand? And he that was over the house, and he that was over the city, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children, sent to Jehu, saying, We are thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt bid us. We will not make any king. Do thou that which is good in thine eyes. Then he wrote a letter the second time to them, saying, If ye be mine, and if ye will hearken unto my voice, take ye the heads of the men your master's sons, and come to me to Jezreel by tomorrow this time. Now the king's sons, being seventy persons, were with the great men of the city which brought them up. And it came to pass, when the letter came to them, that they took the king's sons and slew seventy persons, and put their heads in baskets, and sent him them to Jezreel. And there came a messenger and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering in of the gate until the morning. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out, and stood, and said to all the people, 
Ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master, and slew him. But who slew all these? Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord hath done that which he spake by his servant Elijah. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab and Jezreel, and all his great men, and his kinsfolk, and his priests, until he left none remaining. And he arose and departed, and came to Samaria. And as he was at the shearing house in the way, Jehu met with the brethren of Ahaziah king of Judah, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah, and we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. And he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive, and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him, and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria, till he had destroyed him according to the saying of the Lord which he spake to Elijah. And Jehu gathered all the people together, and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests, let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtlety, to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went, and Jehonadab the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, Search, and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshippers of Baal only. And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without, and said, If any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in, and slay them, let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal, and burned them. And they brake down the image of Baal, and brake down the house of Baal, and made it a draught house unto this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Howbeit from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them, to wit, the golden calves that were in Bethel, and that were in Dan. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart, thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart, for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. In those days the Lord began to cut Israel short, and Hazael smote them in all the coasts of Israel, from Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, and the Reubenites, and the Manassites, from Aruer, which is by the river Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoahaz his son reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was twenty and eight years. 